Speedrunning for thousands of hours over the past couple years has turned me into a video game machine. Whether it's crafting new tech or just flicking my mouse to hit headshots, I've grinded relentlessly to develop the edge needed to climb the Hitman speedrunning leaderboards. But as anyone who has reached the top will know, power and prowess can often invite a challenge. The developers of Meet Your Maker were the first to throw down the gauntlet, a speedrun of five brutally difficult maps custom made by the devs themselves. This is how I broke the Trial of the Makers speedrunning challenge. If you want to support the channel, click on the link in the description below. And of course, huge thanks to Behavior Interactive for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about the basics of Meet Your Maker. Players take on the role of a post-apocalyptic custodian, whose mission is to babysit this weird, giant fetus thingy called a chimera. In order to further the experiment, we have to harvest genetic material from the surrounding wastelands, either by raiding bases of other players, or by building our own to extract the resource ourselves. If we put down our weapons, our enemies would suck the gen mad from our screaming bodies and take it for themselves. Usually they gotta buy me dinner first. My favorite thing about pretty much any game, the upgrades, are accessible via these advisors, who hang out in chairs and then spin around like you just gave a soul-shaking performance of a Whitney Houston classic. For the Trial of the Maker speedrun challenge, you need to extract the gen mat from each of the five bases without getting shot, poked, broiled, sliced, slammed, you get the idea. Our loadout consists of two weapon and equipment slots, a suit with a double jump plus some passive buffs, and of course, our trusty grappling hook. We'll start the timer as soon as the loadout prompt disappears, and pause it once we hit the exit prompt at the end of each level. Any speedrunner knows that to beat a game in as little time as possible, you paradoxically need a lot of time in order to learn about the game, the nuances of its mechanics, the bugs that could save you time. This is why some people think speedrunning is ridiculous, but spending thousands of hours in a game just to shave 10 seconds off a playthrough is just my version of boy math. Although I think I have pretty good mechanical gaming skills, I will admit that my puzzle solving, sense of direction, and overall intuition left a lot to be desired in my first couple bases. But as I kept playing, I slowly got better once I familiarized myself with the different traps, enemies, and special augments that can be applied, such as the one that makes enemies invisible, or the one that makes a trap pop up after you've collected the gen mat. I also think it's a godsend that they give you this little guy who crawls to and from the goal so you can follow him if you get lost. I've named him Steve, and I've sworn to protect him with my life. Once I felt I had a grasp on what the game could throw at me, I took my first shot at the five bases to see how my practice had paid off. At first, it felt like I was riding the struggle bus to suck city population me. Slowly but surely, I did manage to work my way through the bases and record the times of my first successful raids, but it wasn't pretty. I feel like I improved my ability to stay alive towards the later levels, but I was still hopeless at finding my way around. Luckily, this made me run straight into a couple shortcuts. More on those later. But all of my confidence had evaporated by the final level, as I spent hours just trying to get in before I managed to barely escape with my life. Ending up with a total time of 15 minutes and 58 seconds across all five maps. After being beat to my knees, I knew it was time to grind unnecessarily hard. I started hitting the bigger bases, buying and building my own, farming resources while I honed my skills against the onslaught of enemies. I died a lot, but I also learned a lot, such as the armored and unarmored areas of certain guards, effective counters against certain traps, and the power of my friendship with Steve. While you were out partying with your friends, I literally studied the blade, replacing my pea shooter with the sledgehammer, a big old sword with massive lunging range and good damage to boot, and also to head. To jack up my movement speed, I hit up the suit advisor and purchased the Kamatachi suit, upgrading the passives to get a massive improvement in my lunge range and speed, but most importantly the frenzy perk, which gives you a solid boost after you kill a guard or trap. I also discovered the holy grail of speedrunning hardware, the spike drive, or as I like to call it, the juice. Injecting it gives you a flat buff to movement speed that stacks onto all the passives from my suit, 
In the lore, it says that these initial spike drives were used by Canadian soldiers in a desperate but short-lived attempt against American invasion. Oh, come on. Most importantly, I spent a long time examining the physics and the movement of the player character and made several fascinating discoveries that were essential to getting good times. The most fundamental speed tech I invented for this challenge is something I call the grapple hop, or the G-hop for short. When you pull yourself towards a surface with the grappling hook, you travel in a straight line, unable to alter your path. But if you jump, you can transfer the speed into horizontal momentum. Meet Your Maker lets you control the height of your jumps, depending on how long you hold the spacebar. So this results in the ability to cover some serious ground while also having decent influence over your vertical position. You might expect this momentum to transfer into turns, like with bunny hopping, but moving your reticle on the horizontal axis or attempting to change direction by strafing will return you to your ground movement speed. So if you want to go fast, you have to find a way to move in as many long, straight lines as possible. But careful, if you fall from too high a distance, you'll end up in a slow animation I call the landing shuffle. But I'll talk about how to mitigate the effects of that later. Because now, I'd like to proudly present to you my speedrun of the Trial of the Makers Challenge. In Chillmark, our first level, you can see that the grind paid off for my movement, as I'm able to utilize as much of each grapple line as possible, holding the spacebar through the entire jump when I disengage. Once we've made our way to the entrance, you'll see the first usage of my lunge ability. Not only does this let me close the gap between me and my target ridiculously fast, but our suit grants us a speed boost on a successful kill propelling us as we g-hop to this invisible reaper so we can take him out at the legs and immediately inject ourselves with the juice. Things are gonna get a little crazy here, so let me slow it down for a second. Instead of going the obvious route around here, we're going to drop through this sneaky little hole, letting us lunge into another invisible reaper and drop down immediately towards the gen mat. Next, we'll pop a nade into this corner that will take out this annoying guard. An instant before we smash down, we're going to grapple towards the gen mat to avoid a landing shuffle as we simultaneously toggle our equipment slot, injecting another juice as we grab the payload. Here's what that sequence looks like in real time. Finally, instead of going back to the entrance, we'll grapple up towards this sneaky little shortcut, positioning ourselves carefully to do a technical and difficult g-hop off the edge of the base, letting us escape in just under 30 seconds. A massive improvement compared to our first attempt. At the second level of the run, Renner, will immediately start off with some more clean upwards grappling to reach the entrance. I find the juice most helpful in sections where it's either too twisty or sloped to pull off a proper g-hop. So after a speedy turn through the entry hole, we'll immediately inject some and lunge into our first kill on an unsuspecting spike trap. With all our buffs active, we'll ignore the nearby traps and guards as we barrel towards a death piston, taking it out with a swipe of the sledgehammer. After some g-hops down the corridor, we'll toss a nade to take out this trap plummeting to the lower level as we use a quick grapple to mitigate the effects of the landing shuffle. With another well-placed nade, we can take out this guard and head towards the gen mat, injecting another juice as we stick to the middle of the ramp to avoid the trap on the right side. Once again, instead of heading back to the exit, we'll make use of another deviously hidden shortcut before g-hopping to our salvation in a blistering 45 seconds. In the third level, Sardis, we'll start off with some clean g-hops. After a brief hello to Steve, we'll lunge through this guard and inject a juice to make our way through these traps. While these bases may be intimidating, opposing traps can actually take care of each other if you move quickly. Unfortunately for us, our suit doesn't give us a speed boost if the defenses engage in friendly fire, so we have to use our own blades and grenades to get kills and keep the buff active. After some grappling and another thrust on this baddie, we'll g-hop towards this guard and send him a nade, constantly ensuring that we have that passive movement boost as we hit a clean g-hop around this corner. Leaving our last grenade for the trap behind us, we'll sledgehammer another trap and grapple up this hill. Now we just inject a juice, grab the gen mat, and clear a path through the shortcut, swinging our sledgehammer and g-hopping our way to the closest exit. While it wasn't the most difficult base to complete normally, 
Pedrick Town gave me quite the challenge when it came to optimizing the run. That's due in no small part to the initial G-hop, a massive double jump that gives us barely enough distance to land on the edge of the walkway and G-hop into the entrance. As I struggled to corral the insane speed from the juice I just injected through this first guard and around the corner. Here, we'll sprint up a set of walkways and toss down a bomb for the invisible enforcer hiding in the corner. After tossing another grenade to kill these hidden traps, we'll hit a couple G-hops and deflect these bolts, dropping down this tunnel and pulling off another tricky couple of G-hops. With a lunge on this bolt trap, we'll grapple to the left and secure the gen mat, turning around and tossing a grenade on this guard before turning to a secret wall that's about to disappear. But guess what? That's not even the coolest part about what's gonna happen next. I invented another piece of speed tech that I haven't told you about because it was invented specifically for this moment. Using equipment causes a tiny cooldown window on your ability to grapple, meaning that the best way to optimize your movement here would be to hit what I call the grapple juice, where you grapple and instantly hit the juice. The grapple juice is difficult to time properly when chaining together these inputs at first, but with a little practice, the magic of muscle memory makes short work of this trick. With some ridiculous routing and some luck, I was able to escape Pedrick Town in only 43.68 seconds. We've already made it to the fifth and final level of the run, Staniford. With some clean G-hops, we can make our way to the entrance of this behemoth, lunging into the first trap as we inject our first juice to go screaming up the slope leaving a grenade behind us as we scale these little peaks to go lunging at another nearby bolt launcher. With the next trap biting the dust right after, we'll hit a pretty technical G-hop to land just in lunging range of this piston. Two bolt launchers are staring us down, but with our secondary sword's relatively fast swing speed, we can deflect what comes our way and continue on towards the gen mat, letting gravity pull us down and grappling to recover from the landing shuffle animation. With this beast of a base halfway done, it's time to turn around and head for the exit, as I couldn't find a shortcut on this level. In order to complete the caper, we'll use our last juice on the way out, making sure to swing our sledgehammer along the way for some kills, as we let gravity accelerate us towards the entrance. With some final G-hops out the front door, I became the unofficial world record holder for the Trial of the Maker speedrun. I had a ton of fun with this challenge, so if you think you've got what it takes to beat my time, check out the information on how to try these levels yourself in the description. I just wanted to thank Behavior Interactive for being my first ever YouTube sponsor. If you want to support the channel and check out the game for yourself, just click on the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you again very soon. Bye!